Good morning, callers. Of course, since this is the Tuesday before Christmas, let me say to each of you, Merry Christmas. I trust and pray that you are well underway to getting everything in place for Christmas. Uh, I hope you're not a part of that great melee that will be in the streets tomorrow and the next day, uh, hustling for last-minute gifts and all of that kind of good stuff. But just in case you are, just in case you are, I thought about you as I was thinking about this morning's prayer call. This past Friday, of course, I taught my last class at uh, Arkansas Baptist College in Little Rock. We have a satellite campus, and there's a theological seminary there. And I was sharing with my students in terms of preaching and how do we figure out what to preach and so forth, particularly when you come to a holiday like Christmas, when the story doesn't change, uh, you preach the same story every year. How do you find something new? How do you find something fresh that perhaps the people have not considered? And I encourage them that sometimes we have to look specifically at characters in the story. Instead of looking at the whole big story, just begin to isolate certain characters. And that's what I did, you all, as I thought about this morning's prayer call. In Luke chapter 2, verse number 7, all of us know this the verse because it's, uh, it's often preached at Christmas. In fact, I preached it this past Sunday at St. Paul. It says that she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And, of course, uh, we always focus on the fact that there was no room and Jesus was born in less than stellar conditions and so forth. But what I want to focus on is the innkeeper. Most of the time when people preach about the innkeeper and so forth, we make him a villain, you know, that mean, mean innkeeper who wouldn't make room for Jesus in the inn. But the reality is when we look at that particular innkeeper. We have no evidence that he had some room and he just wouldn't let Joseph have one. He was just being ugly and unconcerned. None of those things are true. But the other thing, I think the reason we're so hard on the innkeeper is because we feel guilty because the innkeeper reminds us of us. What do you mean, Davis? Well, here's the thing. Sometimes we are guilty of not making room for Jesus in our lives or not making room for Jesus in our hearts. Now, here's what I want you to take into consideration. The reason the room, the inn was full is because of all of the new business that had come to town. So he was busy taking care of his guests. He was busy running his hotel. Of course, I understand that. But here's what I want to point out. Nowhere do we ever find in the story that he took time and went to the back to see what was going on in the, in the, I mean, back there in the stable or in the barn. He never went back there to congratulate Mary and Joseph to officially worship the Christ, welcome the Christ child. There's nothing about him going back there to worship and so forth. He was so busy that he missed the fact that the Savior of the world was born on his property. He missed it all together because he was so busy taking care of business. And I just wonder, if we've gotten so busy cooking and shopping and putting up trees and wrapping gifts and so forth, that we've messed around and missed out on what Christmas is really all about. And so I want to to encourage you this morning, don't let being busy block your blessing. Don't allow for Jesus and his redemptive love to be present right there in your space, right there in your life, and you miss it all together because you're so busy doing other things. I would imagine had he known who it was in the back, he would have made some time to go out and welcome him, but he didn't slow down long enough to go see. Don't you be found guilty of being so busy that you mess around and miss out on a tremendous blessing that's in our midst. Don't forget. Jesus is the reason for this season. So listen, while well, I'm not telling you not to buy gifts and hang trees and all of that good stuff, because I'm going to do that, what I am going to tell you is don't get so busy that you miss, miss out on the blessing of celebrating the birth of the Christ child, the Savior of the world. Let's pray together. God, we thank you again for this day. 
I thank you for the calling. I thank you for this season, oh God. We are mindful that your only begotten Jesus the Christ is indeed the reason for this season. And God, we repent today. If we've gotten so busy that we've taken the Christ out of Christmas, we repent of that even now. And God, we're going to fix our focus. We're going to redirect. We're going to get it together. We're going to be mindful of the fact that this is really not our birthday. This is really not our holiday. This instead is our time to celebrate the precious gift that you gave to us in the, in the precious day of Jesus. God, we love you, we honor you, and we thank you for that precious gift. And, God, I pray now for every caller on this line that it would indeed be a very Merry Christmas and the beginning of a prosperous new year. We ask it all in the only name that matters, and that's the name of Christ. Amen. Call us. Have a Merry Christmas. I trust and believe it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful new year. I look forward to praying with you again on next week. Don't forget, for those of you who live in the Memphis area, I'd love to see you on Christmas morning at 9 o'clock, one-hour worship at 9 o'clock. For those of you, amen, who live in Memphis and who are going to join me, let me go ahead and tell you, you want to be in my Christmas service. Our Christmas service has a direct impact on your Christmas dinner. If you forfeit Christmas morning worship in order to stay at home and cook and watch TV, hear this prophetic word. Your dressing will be dry. Your potato salad will be watery, and your turkey will be rubbery. You don't want to do that. So set aside an hour to join us on Christmas morning from 9 o'clock until 10. I'll see you there. God bless.